So I'm Teresa Cardiello and I do several little businesses. One is the Cardiello Art Garage um, and that's a place that's in my detached garage. Uh, was used as a garage for many years but now it's home to um, after school classes. I do three after school classes for kids um, uh, per week during the school year. Um, I also do an adult uh, class that's called Thrive. I do this with another um, woman. Her name is Sue Cronenberger and she is a retired therapist and the two of us do it's a kind of a discussion um, art class for adults, um, eight week class. So we do that several times a year. And then I also do um, the um, art camps in the summer. And this summer will be our 19th year doing that. Um, uh, besides that, I also teach piano. Um, and I also do Airbnb, um, both in this house and I also have a mountain house that I, um, I rent that out with Airbnb as well. So wear many hats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and besides that, as if that wasn't enough, but I, um, I have a very small private practice. I have a, um, I'm an LCPC, a licensed uh, mental health therapist. And so I have a small private practice of, um, um, at this point, work, well, working with kids and families. Um, often I try to incorporate art and or music into the sessions when it's applicable. So that's another area that, um, that I add into my complicated life. I really think, especially in the elementary school, that there isn't enough art offered. There is no, uh, you know, art specific teacher. Uh, you might happen to get a, you know, a one teacher in your five years of or six years of elementary school here that that does a lot with art. But as a rule, um, you know, they just they're so busy teaching everything else um, that that it kind of gets pushed behind. I think there is a, a music teacher in each of the elementary schools here. Um, but that's different than, you know, piano specific piano lessons is teaching a skill instead of, you know, the, the music program at the school is pretty broad. They get a taste of, of many things, including trying out guitar and, and um, recorder say, but it's not like learning a specific skill. Um, specifically, I think piano is a good instrument to start on because you learn both clefs and you can go to any instrument, you know, pretty easily after you know how to read music, you know, with both clefs playing piano. So, um, and I think, you know, there's a lot of studies that show that um, including art and music into, you know, one's life really um, helps with kids emotionally. Um, you know, they can express themselves um, through their art, but also cognitively, there's a lot of studies that, that show that, um, you know, in, increased um, cognitive ability when, when music and art is, is, you know, put into their lives on a consistent basis. So, and it's just fun. I think, you know, one, one thing that I do versus maybe some other art teachers is that I introduce lots of different um, kinds of art, different mediums. And so each week the kids don't know what they're going to do or each day in art camp, we change it up every year. And sometimes it's a very scripted lesson, like how to draw a face, but some other times it's just, um, you know, here's clay and we're going to make clay fruit, you know, or um, what, you know, what we're going to do today um, is that I took a picture of their face. They can, you know, cut the face out and then draw cartoon bodies in the art garage, you know. So pretty open-ended, um, you know, some, you know, some projects and some projects are very skill-based. So it's, it's a really big wide variety and, and we do everything from sculpted clay to um, charcoal pencils to um, 
watercolor uh, acrylic paints. Uh, using canvases, we paint outside with easels, um, plein air painting. So they get a real variety of, of you know, things thrown at them. And, and, um, and, and it's all about kind of creativity and exploring more than it is really skill-based. So, so that I think that's maybe different than some art teachers that are more teaching a specific skill or, or a specific medium. It was always, it just always has been an interest. In college, I, um, I got um, a minor in, in fine arts, and that was in, um, in music and um, physical art. So um, I think I just have a real strong interest in, in the arts in general, you know, dance, good movies, um, the symphony. Um, so, um, so that was, that was kind of the, um, what spurred me on to that. When my kids were young, the, the start of the art camps, which was, like I said, 19 years ago, I think, um, to keep up my teaching license, I wasn't teaching at the time, and so to keep up my teaching license, if you weren't, if you weren't currently teaching, you had to take some college classes. So I took art history at Carroll College, and for the project for that class, I decided to come up with a, um, an art camp, um, art history kind of class. And so those first couple years um, were my kids' friends <laughs> who came to the camp, and it kind of grew from there. Um, and it had kind of an art history bent to it. We, you know, I teach about Picasso, um, and then the kids would do a Picasso-ish kind of um, art project, and then the next day, you know, might be Van Gogh. And um, so that was kind of the start of it. And then uh, as the years went by, my kids worked for me. Um, so um, it became kind of a family business. Then for um, eight years, I worked at, at uh, Bryant School as a counselor, and I had to run a summer program, so I was not able to run the art camp, but my um, now adult daughter, Rachel, she took over and she had done the art camp for 10 years. And currently she's a musician, lives in Toronto, but she still comes back and she'll do two weeks of the art camp this summer. So it's still kind of a family business. Um, you know, one, another one of my sons was an art major and so he, he took over the art camp um, business one summer, you know, so it's either one or several of us um, kind of running this camp in the summer. Um, so last year I was a counselor up until last year at MDC and after um, retiring from that job I started up the after school classes again and, and um, kind of broadened my piano lessons business. So, um, so yeah, that's when I kind of started doing many things. <laughs> so I work with adults um, and we do a little discussion uh, piece of it and, and we, we always talk about um, quieting the inner critic. This is more true with adults, you know, where they come and say, oh, I can't draw anything or, or theirs is, you know, this other person's better or I shouldn't be in this class, everybody else is better than I am or, you know, so kind of quieting that down and it's, it's all about exploring and having fun with it and, um, you know, and creating, you know, creating something, you know. So um, kind of a similar example is in my piano uh, classes, um, piano lessons. At the end of the school year, I require kids to make up their own song. They have to create a song. And I, I teach different things that can spur them on to, to um, to come up with something, and some kids are just like I can't, I can't. It's not my thing. I don't, you know. But um, but we kind of work through that, and we just had a piano recital at the one, last one of the year, last uh, this last Sunday, and everybody came up with a song. I write out the music um, on manuscript paper f for them, and so they end up uh, with something. I say when they're 90 years old, they can pull out this piece of paper and say, I created this when I was, you know, eight years old, you know. Um, 
So, um, and I think the sense of accomplishment when kids do order music is, uh, is a lot. Um, you know, helps with their self-esteem. Um, I, like I said, I have a very small private practice. Um, one individual I work with um, sees herself as an artist. And so um, we build that into her sessions that she can work on some kind of art project or sometimes an art project specific to what we're working on. Like an example is this uh, anger dial thing that I, I have kids uh, work on um, that kind of talks about um, and they decorate it, and, but it has to do with levels of anger and when it gets to a, like a red zone, you know, where, where bad things happen, um, words get said, screaming happens, yelling, fighting, um, you know, and kind of what to do with that to calm down to a place where you can make decisions that uh, are healthy. So, um, so I try to create things that they can make something or create something to express some of their feelings. So, so um, yeah, so both in, in creating something that they feel proud of or creating things that help them express themselves. That's all, I think, all positive things for, for kids.